I'm afraid not for the first time the government has got it the wrong way round. Specifically, Grant Shapps has got it the wrong way round. His idea that the government uh, plans to impose a minimum service level for um, public sector businesses that want to strike, he's right about that. He's absolutely right. Um, this uh, MSA, which we presented to Parliament on Tuesday. And he's absolutely wrong, and the unions are absolutely right to criticise him in the way that he is presenting it. It's not the unions and it's not the workers who have to um, maintain a minimum service level for public services. It is the government that has to maintain that. It's not down to the workers who still have their um, right, uh, moral right, to strike, to withdraw their labour. It is still down to the government to maintain that public level of service. That is, whether it is transport, whether it is the National Health Service, whether it is the police force, whether it is the ambulances, whether it is the army. All of these public service um, industries on which we as a civilised nation rely are provided... Um, by the government. The government, it's the government's responsibility to ensure that they are there. It's not, for example, uh, breaking a strike to ask the army to move in and drive ambulances. After all, that was what happened during the Second World War. Remember, uh, the former queen, uh, uh, her late majesty, was an ambulance driver. I'm sure she would be horrified by the idea that ambulances can go on strike and therefore the ambulance service is withdrawn that people who are working on the call centres can go on strike and therefore the call centre is withdrawn. This is nonsensical. This is not how it should be working. The Royal, Colleges of, the Royal College of Nursing can go on strike. Uh, the, the nurses can go on strike, but it doesn't mean that nursing should stop. Uh, and this is something that I'm afraid the present government has failed to understand. So the present government, instead of accepting the responsibility... Uh, for meeting the public need, seems to think it can transfer that responsibility onto those people who it is failing to pay properly and who it is failing to deal with squarely and uh, with humanity. This is a form of bullying. It is simply unacceptable. And the government needs to recognise its responsibility and I think it goes beyond this. Once we've got a um, once we've got an understanding of this idea of responsibility, then we can um, exploit it. We can we 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 can move it in, in into other areas of life. But at the moment, we have no idea of public responsibility, because we have transferred that from the people who should sh who should shoulder that responsibility to others who feel that they are being overwhelmed and overburdened by a responsibility that has been imposed on them and uh, that they are not being adequately paid for um, in response to that. It's, <clears throat> it's, all about, it's all about morality. It's not about um, the cost of living or pay. It's about basic morality. And I'm afraid at this particular moment, though there'll be people who won't like me saying so, it doesn't matter who's in power. This is a move that took place probably about 30 or 40 years ago, um, probably pre-Thatcher. It's a move that took place during the Wilson Callaghan period. And so that's 40 years ago. And it's a move that I'm afraid we have been waiting for this moment for a very, very long time. And we're going to be playing catch-up for even longer unless we grasp the nettle and recognise that the government has a responsibility. And particularly with public services, the government has a responsibility. We cannot withdraw from people the right to strike. People have a moral right to strike no matter what their job. It is still the government's job to make sure that those public services are provided.
And there's a simple test for this, by the way. The simple test is, if we were facing a national emergency, would we still expect to have ambulances? Yes, we would. If we were facing a national emergency, would we still expect to have police? Would we still expect to have an army? Would we still expect to have firefighters? Would we still expect to have a functioning NHS? Yes, we would. That's the test. And who is responsible for, for producing these services? The government. And particularly with the NHS, which doesn't work, uh, the, it's the government's responsibility. It hasn't transferred that responsibility to managers. Everybody who works for the NHS is the same. There is nobody who is in charge of the NHS except for the government. The government made a contract with the people in the late 1940s to deliver a service from cradle to grave. It is the government's responsibility to do that however it needs to, however it can. And it is not the government's job to bully people into working when they feel they're not being paid or properly treated.